Fashion News opens its fashion vaults to the most important, influential, and trend-setting designers of the last 30 years. Designer Marathon brings you a unique chronicle of the milestone moments, the landmark collections, the exhibitions, the favorite models, and the creative process behind every designer's career. From the first to the last, from the shocking to the classic, follow the evolution of the world's top designers from rising star to fashion icon. It's all here in the vault, a retro spectacular timeline, a designer marathon. The French-based house of Louis Vuitton has been creating luggage since 1854 and has grown into an international symbol of luxury. One of the earliest and most visionary designs used by Vuitton was a waterproof canvas. When the LV monogram pattern emerged, it became an early pioneer of international brand name status symbols and quickly accompanied discerning travelers around the world. Mark Jacobs was appointed as creative director to develop the first ready-to-wear collection for the house. During his tenure, Jacobs has elevated the accessory brand into a must-see show on the Paris fashion calendar and has attracted a notable celebrity following. I thought it was superb. That is really excellent. You know, it's LV. The top of the top, the best of the best. Creme de la creme. genius is sort of commercial genius exposes with the accessories. I thought the bags were absolutely remarkable the way every season he's able to take the Vuitton handbag and make it the bag that everyone's going to want to have. You could see the cynical side of it and say, oh, it's commercial to put so many bags on the runway, but he does it with a sort of wink and a laugh, and, and I think that that ability to constantly keep it light and keep it funny and keep the cash register ringing is an unbelievable talent. Mark's designs continue to be admired on the runway, and the managers consistently keep the Louis Vuitton label modern and covetable. To be able to grow and, and start this new French family, it's been a great experience, and I'm just, you know, I'm glad that I'm really enjoying fashion again. Given the onerous task of taking the luxury of the Bouton name into the world of ready-to-wear, all eyes were on American Marc Jacobs. Jacobs' minimalist version of American sportswear redefined traditional French views of luxury. Every day I thought about what is, is this Louis Vuitton? Is a down coat Louis Vuitton or is a fur coat Louis Vuitton? Is a canvas French coat Louis Vuitton or is a mink coat Louis Vuitton? You know, and I made the choices. I didn't want it to look like haute couture. I wanted it to look like very deluxe ready-to-wear. And I wanted that to be durable and practical and functional. I think, you know, it's very classic, but it's very understandable. And when it comes down to it, those are the kind of clothes that women all over the world really want to wear. Not for uh, glamour occasions, but for every day. And that's what Vuitton is about. The most important thing to do was to start with something quite classic and quite simple, and to do it in in fabrics and to think about details that are maybe inside, you know, not to do the obvious thing that's expected from Louis Vuitton clothing, but to do something to start with a clean slate that we can build on. So it's the beginning of a style and now we can evolve and we can start to redefine luxury. The clothes were beautiful, simple, they weren't overstated, they weren't fancy or funny, they were just pure luxury. That was really great, I mean it was such a triumph, I think, I hope the French like it. It was so beautiful, so pure, and really modern, it's the way you want to dress. 
was very Marc Jacobs. Um, I expected maybe some more handbags and shoes with a couple of LVs, uh, but I thought uh, he certainly was true to himself. Uh, in a way, it was very American. Um, I'm not so sure that the French loved it. Have you talked to any French? <laughs> uh, here's a French woman, a journalist. Oh. Ah, there you go. No, I just mean that he was grand when everybody was minimalist. And we, when we all wanted minimalism, and now that we are over the minimalism, looking for some lux, luxuries, he's, he's a minimalist. It's like I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do for Paris? What am I going to do for Paris? But in the end, I just have to, you know, I just did what I thought was right. I mean, we're in Paris. That's enough, I think. At Park Citron, Marc Jacobs showed once again that he and the House of Vuitton are a perfect match. I have my ideas about the way things should be, and then I also have this respect for tradition, and I have an incredible respect for quality. I mean, more so than even luxury. I like quality things, and I like things that endure. And so, because I have an appreciation for that, I appreciate the prestige of the name Louis Vuitton and what they stand for. And it allows me to feel free about what I do, which is so sort of much more contemporary in a way. And that contemporary look was the idea behind the hair and makeup. Basically, all the girls are meant to look like caricatures of themselves with hair extensions and basically we're straightening their hair and gluing it in so their hair looks like really long and really shiny. Basically, we wanted very natural, but wanted something that would make the eyes pop. So we just put like a black line along the bottom of the eyes, you can see, and then inside an amount of white, so it makes the eyes really stand out and look really big. My inspiration was um, my friends, um, Kira's, cucumbers, um, the sky, um, the Millennium. I like quite soft textures that don't, that aren't fluffy. So a lot of the cottons were brushed cotton. And then I also like very crisp cottons that are almost like taffeta and um, very sleek um, satins that are dull like Radzimir. Um, those are the textures I like. I like flat textures because I think they look youngest and most modern. Accessories are so great and I think that they're sort of coming back in terms of fashion right now because you know, people can sort of get a piece of color or they can, you know, sort of get a new belt or get a new shoe and they can sort of, you know, add that to their wardrobe and sort of feel fresh. I just keep thinking about the same things I was thinking of the first time, but I keep trying to, to think how that becomes more approachable for the woman who is the Louis Vuitton customer. And that's a very difficult thing to think about because Louis Vuitton's customer is so broad and vast. It's not one person, it's not one country, it's international. In keeping with their century-old tradition of combining sophistication with travel, luxury goods company Louis Vuitton organized the third annual Louis Vuitton Classic at Rockefeller Center in New York. Louis Vuitton is, uh, is a tradition of uh, elegance since uh, the 19th century. And um, it's clear that the, the history of automobile has been uh, punctuated by uh, the development of an uh, elegance that you, you see in all those classic cars. So um, organizing classic car events for us is emphasizing the history, the travel, but of course uh, the elegance under all circumstances. What they do is they hold this car show and they ask me to do it, which was very nice of them because it's fun to do. Uh, and the class is, this is the fit one class, it's called competition cars. Back in the back there you have a Lister Jaguar, which is an American car. Next to it is the Ferrari 335S. This is a car for men only. This is a Scarab, it's the only one in the world. This is a Maserati 8 CTF. This is a car from the age of heroes. Would you like to move to the next class? These are stylish, fast cars. This class is all about style and speed. And this is a TZ Alfa Romeo, TZ2. Only nine were built. Behind it, you can see an array of Ferraris, Maserati, Aston Martin. And the silver car there on the left 
actually belonged to Roberto Rossellini, and he gave it to his wife, Ingrid Bergman, as a present when they got married. This class is about very old and very interesting cars. Our oldest cars are in this class. This is a Hispano Suiza with a wooden body built by a skiff maker in France in the 1920s. If you walk backwards a little bit, you'll come to the oldest car in the show. It's a Rolls Royce that was built for Lord Dundas in Scotland in 1907. I'd like to show you the inside because it's really fantastic in here. This is a Porsche class. It's the 50th anniversary of Porsche, so we decided we'd bring a group of really extraordinary Porsches here. And this is a very famous car. It's a cult car too because everybody wants a Porsche Speedster from the late 50s. This class is called True Greats, and I think you can see why. This is a, a Berlinetta Alfa Romeo, made for racing in 1938. This car has a thousand horsepower. I think that proves our point about design and cars as rolling sculpture. That's how you describe them, and I think you see it here. We've looked at some fantastic cars tonight, beautiful cars, fast cars, stylish cars, and I hope you've really enjoyed it. collection for Louis Vuitton, Marc Jacobs has developed a signature voyage theme and continues the Vuitton legacy as a luxury travel company. At Park Citron, it was as if the luggage compartment met the fashion crowd. From oversized backpacks and travel bags, through high-waisted smock skirts and pants, Jacobs puts comfort on track. He maintained his witty design tactics by including Vuitton logo blankets as hooded coats, black and white fur parkas, and sweaters with detachable turtlenecks and sleeves. His understanding that modern dressing is about strong individual pieces and their ability to mix with one's own wardrobe makes it all the better for excursion lifestyle. Jacobs continues to connect Louis Vuitton with international style through his ability to know what we need. Big name shows are often the starting point for defining a season's look. An excellent example was at Louis Vuitton, where style teams endorsed a fresh face and feminine hair. It's just very fresh, you know, the use of colors, but all very lightly applied. Lavender, blue, green, maybe some yellows and ochres, pink on the cheeks, pink stain on the lips, finished prepared skin. We thought it'd be a really good idea if we actually did salon hair for a show. So uh, what we're actually doing is we're blow drying the hair to perfection. <laughs> so it's like really straight with a bend and a little bit of movement to it. Their hair is just going to be brushed back, very, very shiny, very loose and caught in these um, Louis Vuitton hair accessories. 
From his beginnings, designer Marc Jacobs has been a keen observer of what savvy women want. With the movie soundtrack of working women in the air, Jacobs offered a multifaceted collection for the modern woman he dresses. Updated Vuitton logos made for a graphic element. Silk and chiffon blouses soften skirt sets. And sleek trenches and hot pants put a sexy accent on the season. This collection was really a celebration of every facet of life, I think. You know, from working, to playing, to jogging, to dining, to cocktails, to dinner. It was a bit cliché, but it was deliberately a celebration of those clichés. Because again, if you're going to have to get up and go to work, you might as well enjoy doing it. You might as well look fabulous doing it. What makes somebody contemporary is their ability to move around. The best finest silk jerseys and silk chiffon jerseys, the best cashmere is cashmere and silks, the finest cottons, the island cottons. Uh, just, you know, 100% pure good stuff. All the prints, the geometric prints and the floral prints, they all really stemmed from manipulating the monogram logo. So they were all sort of based on the Vuitton uh, symbols. I'm a foreigner here, so to be able to grow and, and start this new French family, it's really been great, and I love them dearly. It's been a great experience, and I have, I'm just, you know, I'm glad that I'm really enjoying fashion again. This time for me, Vuitton was right on the money. Jacobs played up the Reagan 80s with sharp-shouldered suiting and lush flash dance moves. There were bits and touches, again, from our memory of that period in the 80s when it was the beginning of Azadine and Gautier and Terry Mugler and Montana. Mark Jacobs really played very well with the 80s vibe. Um, it was not at all heavy-handed. It was very sophisticated. We tone Mark Jacobs was 80s in a new way, though. I thought he did a very good job. The color palette remained classic Vuitton, with neutral beige and black being predominant, but spiked with peppermint, teal, and chocolate. There were a lot of evening fabrics mixed with day fabrics, you know, tweeds lined with lame so that they weren't rustic or country-ish at all. And then things like leather, and printed leather, printed leather with satin, very classic sort of French gab with leather trim or satin trim. Jacob's accented detailing such as the decorative silver hardware and zippers situated diagonally across oversized jackets and coats. Some really nice new, new proportions, particularly in kind of the low hip belted jackets. Very sophisticated and I think absolutely right for the Vuitton customer. The famous caramel and brown decoupe print resurfaced in a new way this season. We just cut it all up, made it into paillettes, and just sprinkled it all over bags and dresses. So it became almost like a tortoise shell and a texture as opposed to a pattern. So we just destroyed it. <laughs> I thought um, Marc Jacobs' collection for Louis Vuitton was very, very commercial, very wearable. Always a big draw, the Louis Vuitton show drew one of the largest audiences to date. Backstage was cramped, but the beauty team had work to do. It's a very powerful eye based on just water and ink, so there's no eyeshadow, no nothing. It's just um, liquid liner. We always have to reinvent. It's not, it's not about, you know, saying this is over and this is now and this is... You just play with things, you know? It's like everybody here is wearing clothes. And like I said, the design team at Vuitton is one of the best anywhere and, and I love them dearly. And the, and, and the ateliers, everything. There's such a thing as Parisian chic. Just, you know, I, I don't know. It's all a myth and it's all whatever, you know, illusion you have in your mind. But, I mean, I think Paris is a pretty amazing place. And I think that people are pretty stylish here. Yeah, wow. It's like Disneyland.
<laughs> what can I say? It's an icon. It's like Mickey Mouse and the American flag. Oh, I'm gonna get in so much trouble for saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the Eiffel Tower and Mickey Mouse. I never say anything is the end. As soon as you say it's the end, you're doomed to repeat it. So I just, you know, live and let live. We did it our way. We took military jackets and molded them into the waist and we made skirts feminine by, by doing it our way. You know, layering that over a tool and over organza, etc., etc. But they're all quite simple. We like the hibiscus green and there was a funny, a funny sort of pressed toothpaste green. I don't know, odd colors mixed with grays and navies and blacks and khakis and army greens. Sort of grab, drab colors with then shots of bubblegum pink or fluo yellow. I mean, it's all kind of off. Steven Sprouse did all the roses along with our team at Louis Vuitton. We all worked together and we worked by photographing digitally roses, cutting up roses. He made roses with magic markers. But we liked the idea of, I mean, a kind of play on words, both Guns and Roses, which was the military and the roses, and La Vie en Rose, which even though it doesn't mean the same thing, it was all kind of a play on words. And Rose being a very feminine and kind of cliche flower, it's kind of roses like a dozen roses is the icon of flowers, just like Louis Vuitton is an icon for luggage. Every day is a different day, who knows why or whatever. I think every moment is a good moment for fashion. Because it's all over in a minute anyway. You've got to enjoy it while it lasts, because it don't last very long. No matter how modern life has got, everyone is still dressed. With a loose reference to cartoons, hair and makeup took on a youthful spirit at Louis Vuitton. It's very based on cartoon characters, very based on manga. And Mark just says, be influenced by it. I want you to be really influenced by it. So we came up with the outline of the eye in the pale baby blue, which is, you know, it's in the dresses as well as on the bags. And then we just outlined in a red. Bridget Bardot is very sporty, French, cheeky, glamorous, casual, sexy, 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 sexy girl. The fashion world always looks forward to what surprise Marc Jacobs has in store. And this season, he enlisted popular Japanese anime artist Takashi Murakami to add a touch of whimsy. Takashi's a wonderful man with a great, I guess, a great uh, sense of life. You know, I love his pop sensibility. I love his, uh, you know, absolutely unbridled use of color. I love the kind of dark side to all of his joy. The final process with Mark Jacobs in the collaboration, so we found the you know three characters from the you know monogram flower design, three type of things. It's great, it's great, he's genius. We tried to show similar silhouettes interpreted in many different ways. We wanted to show that we could make, you know, a couture jacket in the old sense out of a raffia fabric, you know, beautifully done lined in silk taffeta, and then we can do the exact same shape and structure through a completely different type of technology. There were some wonderful prints done by a girl who collaborates with us many times named Christine. She worked with us on those beautiful, very pale, subtle prints that were in black and gray or gray and navy. and. Um, also those very pale, the peach and the ivory and the um, lavender and white on the scuba sort of neoprene things. All those kind of sort of pan-American sort of Hawaiian shirt spot inspired print. And then there was the very basic stripes and polka dots, which to me are basic, they're not even prints, you know, it's like just basics. It's not me who does anything, it's me and my team. And that makes me very happy and I, I like to collaborate with people because I really believe in like an exchange of ideas and thoughts and concepts. Siren was the inspiration backstage, but the fashion on the runway clearly drew on more eclectic beauty icons. I think in the end, it was quite fun to look at the girls and sort of 
feel like who they evoke, like in a kind of contemporary way. So whether it was an Italian film star or a French film star or whether it was English film star, you know, from Julie Christie to Bridget Bardot to Elizabeth Taylor to Sophia Loren, you know, those are references, they're iconic references. And at Vuitton, I always think of like a kind of iconic thing. You know, it's just like so, you know, you know them by their first name. It's like, you know Vuitton by Vuitton, you know those women by those first name, but, but I don't think that was really the starting point. Like I said, it just sort of always filters in somewhere. It felt very um, vintage inspired and very personal style, sort of dress up, make what you want of it. But I always feel with Louis Vuitton, it's a message that's very personal and also very um, couture because it is such a limited distribution of the ready-to-wear and, you know, it's very expensive and and so I think that that, I look at it like Mark by Mark Jacobs is the accessible line, then his own line, and then Louis Vuitton is sort of the couture line. We wanted to give it like a youthful and contemporary sort of twist, so some things were achieved, like the idea of like an interesting trim on the skirt was really achieved by cutting the skirt shorter than the lining. Or you know, taking a piece of the hem of another skirt and sticking it on top of the other skirt. So there was a kind of naive do-it-yourself approach to making something look opulent, which I think made it look young instead of like old school. bags were unbelievable. There were so many of them on the runway, I couldn't believe it. But I think he does it in a, you know, you could see the cynical side of it and say, oh, it's commercial to put so many bags on the runway. But he does it with a sort of wink and a laugh. And, and I think that that ability to constantly keep it light and keep it funny and keep the cash register ringing is an unbelievable talent. The colors I thought were really beautiful. The gold statement is obviously very important this season. One of the things we had as, as a reference was the opulence of some of those beautiful fun paintings, um, Cleopatra, some of the Egyptian costume and things like that. I thought it was great. I, I'm always so impressed by Mark's ability. It's sort of an ineffable ability to keep the audience panting for more. And I don't know how he does it, but he does it, you know, every, what, four times a year, six times a year? I mean, it's amazing. Although a major fashion player now, the Vuitton name is one that is built on a history of quality and tradition. Recently, the company converted what was once the Vuitton family home, located on the outskirts of Paris, into a museum. Patrick Louis Vuitton, great-grandson of the original Louis Vuitton, has fond memories of his childhood there. I was born here and lived here almost 35 years. I remember sometimes on Sunday with the whole family in the garden. The art of the fabrication has always been here in Asnières. Every old trunk, all the best sellers, like Louis Vuitton, are here. And this is the only workshop. 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 That was superb. That was really excellent. Uma Thurman's brilliant sparkle at Louis Vuitton was the perfect counter to the somber mood on the runway. Designer Marc Jacobs showed dark looks and took inspiration from an often turn of the century arts and craft movement. I thought it was beautiful. I loved the color palette and the fabrics. It was like a kind of a move away from the, well, from a couple of seasons ago, the lady, but it was very demure and I loved, um, like very, very sensual, very like feminine and um, was sort of a Renaissance woman. I loved the velvet and the jeweling. It was really quite beautiful. And I think it was extremely 
classic in certain ways. It was about a certain 40s sense of luxury, beautifully made clothes, dressmaker details, um, fantastic seaming and finishing and piping. It's an extraordinarily luxurious collection, which is, I think, a wonderful thing for Vuitton, because when you think of Vuitton, you think of those big trunks and those fantastic pieces of luggage that have all the little pockets inside and are so well designed. And this collection referenced that, that sensibility in the clothes. You felt that, you know, they were big investment pieces, pieces where the fur was in the right place and the, the um, tool was in the right place and everything, all the details were so amazing. Very de somber but decorated at the same time. I, I can't remember the numbers of the names, but some of the dresses, the coats, they're beautiful. The grey dress and the black coat with the dark pressed flowers, the wine coloured flowers that looked like he just picked them out of the forest and stuck them on. And you could almost smell it. You could smell the woods. Or was it the smell of money that pervaded the air? Puma's recent campaign may be great for business, but it's the bags that are true money makers in a retail collection. The bags that came out with the stones on them were just, they were just brilliant. It looked like ultimate luxury without being ostentatious, without being flashy, without being kind of um, over the top and colorful. It was a whole discreet, luxurious sense of, I don't know, investment. And that's what I thought was so good about it. I flew here especially for this, I leave on Monday, so. but it was worth it. It's worth my weekend. It's worth it. For spring, Jacobs revisited all the glitz and gloss of the 80s with scarf prints and shiny hardware. I thought it was incredibly optimistic and upbeat and had a tremendous energy to it. You know, just so many ideas and product. Right. <laughs> it was a wonderful note to end up the collections on. I love those hits of sort of intense kind of 60s color. I thought that there were just so many sort of great subtle details. I mean, I love the sort of beige wool crepe coat with uh, leather blanket stitching and a fringe, which is a sort of interesting collision of ideas. I like that the things appeared to be one thing and then the closer the girls strode to you on the runway you sort of realized that everything was a little bit off kilter and a bit weird and the hem of a skirt had kind of deliberately slipped and something that looked like it was very structured and sort of Barbie and A-line-y actually had some kind of weird random pleats going on. It's a more subtle take on, on what he did for for his own line collection in New York. So I love that he that he took that kind of 60s Barbie silhouette that he loves and kind of tweeted and made it a bit weird and sick. <laughs> but in a good way. I thought it was fun, I thought it was colorful. I saw two things that I must, must have. So um, I'm excited, but I thought the shoes were great, the bags were great. So. The white and the like brown with the mirrors, amazing, so, must. <laughs> Louis Vuitton closed out the season by converting the Petit Palais into a logo-laden spectacle. No, it's LV. It's the top of the top, the best of the best. Creme de la creme. It's this type of acclaim that has earned Louis Vuitton the top spot in Paris' Fashion Week schedule. He just has so much fun with designing, with like the sprinkling, like, putting all the jewels on the dresses, to now like playing the big bird skirts. You know, he just has so much fun with these plays, you know, which is, I think designers should do. You know, it's funky and it's really fun. For Louis Vuitton is very fresh and natural. Mark wanted to go exactly as they are, beautiful and fresh. Just a tiny bit of blush on the cheeks for a little bit more life and powder. 
and um, they look really gorgeous. All right, we might do a little lip balm, but that's it. I say the sort of the standout thing is definitely the hats of this show. The sort of eighty-five percent are wearing hats, so I'm just complimenting it. The hats in question were influenced by the late Stephen Sprouse, a friend and colleague of retone designer Mark Jacobs. Known as a downtown art icon in the '80s, in recent years Sprouse has become the muse of sorts to Jacobs. Steven is, is a designer whose work I've always admired, which is why I approached him to, to work with us at Recon. We commissioned him to do a graffiti over the monogram a couple of years ago. While he was working with us um, at Recon on the 2001 Spring Summer Collection, where he developed many prints for, for Recon, we sort of went back to the library of artwork that we had from Steven, and we said we'd like to do this leopard again. It seemed like the right thing to do. And they, you know, he had done it in many different colors and stuff like that. And, um, we just thought it was right, and, and as soon as that choice was made, I thought about some of the collections of Stevens that I guess people didn't really know, like when he did these cyber kind of ski boots and stuff like that, and then also in the way he looked and the funny hats that he wore and the way that he wore them and stuff like that. So, so he is a person, he is a giving human being, he is an artist, he is a designer, he is someone who I've worked with, you know, and who's part of our archive at Louis Vuitton, I thought it just seemed right. Like designers at other major houses who mine the archives of their predecessors, Jacobs can refer only to his own body of work. And it's really weird to like self-reference, but you know when you do it, you sort of need to, you know, sometimes you think, oh well I can go back and do that. And then you do that and that doesn't stand up today because it just doesn't look big enough or long enough or wide enough or shiny enough or whatever it is. So then you've got to go back in search of new materials and a new way to say the same thing if that's what you're you know, choosing to do. Any kind of choice that I personally make regarding what we do is an impulse and a whim and that's it. I mean there's kind of explanations or I can attribute it to certain things that are going on in the world or in my life or, or both. But the initial like impulse to do something is really a whim. You know, I don't really know where it comes from. That gray bag was incredible with the big uh, like brass plate and the uh, the boots were great. And uh, that silver duffel bag, I'm for sure gonna have that. That's mine. I told I just told Mark, like, you know, I'm not leaving without it. Mine, 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 mine. It's like a nice day at the picnic, you know? It's good. It's appropriate. Hairstylist Guido Palau kept the bucolic feeling with a mixed bouquet of pretty floral headbands. They're more than just one band. They're like two or three. They're juxtapositioned of like flowers and then gold and black metal and things and metal headbands. So though it's a pretty look, it's still very sophisticated. It's not wishy-washy. Very fresh, um, very natural skin, and just a little bit of glitter under the eyes. And eyebrows contoured, fresh and natural with a little bit of magic under the eyes. That magic continued on the runway. Really a very charming collection, lots of little faded Liberty prints and lace and almost like a, he'd been inspired by the uh, garden scenes, the, the farm scenes of Marie Antoinette. I thought maybe his friend Sophia's Coppola's movie had been an influence. Well, it looked like it was predominantly done in cotton, which I thought was like, you know, keep it light, uh, very pretty, you know, big take on the dress again. But I, what I love, my, one of my favorite sort of takeaways from that collection was the shirt as a shirt dress. But it really started as like, almost like a man's shirt with the, with the tails like a man's shirt. I love the sort of mix of things too. Again, almost all in creams and whites and tans. And again, in cotton, it might be a, a ruffled thing, but a lot of ways for a girl to wear it herself. As usual, the bags and the shoes were 
completely unlike anything anybody's doing and, and I, I was in love, in lust. I have to admit that my eye just focused on the bags because I decided that the clothes are so narrowly available that it's really a show about accessories. You can just picture these women fighting over those bags. Where his real genius, his sort of commercial genius, explodes is with the accessories. I thought the bags were absolutely remarkable, the way every season he's able to take the Vuitton handbag and make it the bag that everyone's going to want to have. I love the tatty uh, sort of plaid bags, the big totes, which if you actually looked at them were in fact very, very soft leather. Black lady bags, yeah, essentially, but they're now in Boss with Louis Vuitton, you know, what used to cost about a dollar fifty at your local uh, you know, corner store now costs, I don't know, thousands from Vuitton. The bags were great, but you guys know, you don't need to hear from me, it was great. The bags were great. Sure to be a sought after were the shoes. I saw a lot of wedges, uh, cut out wedges, kind of like a Henry Moore sculptor, I thought. So um, as much as I'm not a huge fan of the wedge, it looks like it's continuing on into spring. Sometimes the, these spring summer collections I don't get very excited about because I, you know, I look forward to all the opulence and the, you know, the layers. But there are so many beautiful layers and, and things that, that really spoke to me, like the kind of hints at the, the little boudoir lingerie pieces and the corseted dresses. Backstage beauty teams began transforming modern young teenagers into classic Dutch-inspired beauties of the 17th century. Oh. We're backstage at Louis Vuitton and it's all about fresh natural skin, a little bit of advanced radiance by CoverGirl wherever needed, um, just very natural and just a really strong wing, very directional and uh, slightly rebellious, but no other makeup at all. A little teasing because there's a lot of big berets and things, so it's quite minimal, simple, long ponytail, so I'm adding extension to the girl's hair just to make it a little bit more dramatic, sort of almost like a Dutch painting kind of, you know, very simple, pure, uncomplicated um, vision of a woman. Designer Mark Jacobs presented his homage to the Dutch painter Vermeer within the walls of the Cour de Carré at the Louvre. I just thought it was a very chic, but still you get the feeling of Paris and the artistic influence and showing in the Louvre and, you know, the volumes and a little bit artsy, but pulled together. It's always the kicker for the season and I'm, I was really excited today. It went very sophisticated, very pared down compared to last season. 40s and 50s shaved below the knee hemline, which we're seeing everywhere. They didn't feel retro at all and I think that's because of the fabrics and the colors. Um, you know, they had pomegranates, peaches, these icy grays, these like Air Force blues, these beautiful feathered oversized newspaper boy caps and berets. Um, the bags were laminated, logos in navies and browns with shearling trim on them or beautiful patent details. We were really inspired by paintings by Vermeer and uh, Scarlett Johansson was here and she of course portrayed the girl with the pearl earring and we, we sort of jokingly portrayed this collection, called this collection the girl with the monogram handbag as an homage to Vermeer and to Scarlett who is our sort of spokesmodel for the past season and will be again for the winter. You know, Mark is very, very good at taking an idea and then layering elements which takes it from being just sort of a, a literal reference into something being really new and something the eyes never seen before. Um, I thought it was very sophisticated, a complete reversal from last season, you know, a completely new silhouette. Um, and, you know, again, one that I think has a little bit of a romance to it, but it's pretty pared down.
I thought the show was beautiful and exciting, and I love the Richard Prince Naughty Nurses. At Louis Vuitton, Marc Jacobs continued his successful series of collaborations with contemporary artists, this time teaming up with Richard Prince. We want to really, you know, part of the collection, but we want the inspiration, you know, the inspiration were nurses by Richard Prince. I think Richard Prince collaborated with Marc Jacobs on his collection. So it was fun, you know, coming out as the nurses and then coming out again as us and seeing all the girls was nice. It was exciting, I mean, we flew from New York only for this, for Mark, doing this special appearance. My collaboration with Richard Prince was amazing. He's one of the greatest American contemporary artists. I personally collect his work, I love his work. He's got a great opening or, or a retrospective of the Guggenheim. We collaborated, he had this idea about Louis Vuitton After Dark, inspired by all these um, romance novels that were covering the tent of these After Dark things. So we thought evening wear. Then I thought of other things that Richard thinks about, like SpongeBob SquarePants, these checks that he paints over, etc. So we took the colors of that, we collaged shoes, we mixed, we cross-referenced, we appropriated, we changed, we twisted, we tried to do him proud. I love his work, I love him as a person, and we had a great collaboration. I think it was really cool and cartoony and totally right for the 21st century. I mean, it's what people look like. They look like characters and caricatures, you know? So that's it. Well, I love what he does for Vuitton. I love uh, especially the clothes, the tailoring, the suits, winter clothing especially. And you know, I think he's a great person and I love what he does for his own line too. So I'm a, I'm a big fan and a customer. I haven't absorbed it all yet, but um, it was really great to watch. And um, there was a reddish dress that I liked, the green in the back. I love the collection, I love the color. I thought the shoes were gorgeous. Obviously the bags were great. I loved, um, I loved the use of these sequins as well. I mean, there were so many pieces that I really, really liked and that I would wear myself. I think Mark is obviously a genius and it was great. It was definitely, it, it was definitely worth being here for. It was one of the best shows I've seen.